I'd say old school, but with a new a new edge. Mm. That's what that's how I describe it. And I think because I've done sort of the working men's clubs and the holiday camps and and you know everything from sort of the comedy store to pantomime, you kind of learn to sort of cope with every audience really. And so it's great training and it stands you in in good stead. Um, you know, when you're in, in any in any environment. What I hate about current comedians is they don't do jokes. Now, could you explain to me where the jokes have gone in comedy? Um, well, I think it's more about character stuff now. And it, I mean, in my show, I don't necessarily do sort of kind of obvious jokes. It's more sort of it is more character based because I've got three different characters in 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 my show, and the comedy comes from the situation. So it's almost a bit sitcom uh, with me. And I think with with you know today's stand up comedians and there are some fantastic people around um it's just a sort of slightly different twist on you know they had they had to be things had to change a bit and i think it's just their own it's their own personality and therefore the humor comes from the situations that they're talking about or the observations that they're I saw you in Panto and it was a chance for you to have your own little play with the audience, which of course is brilliant and yeah. you do that so well. Thank you. Bloody hard work though, isn't it? Turning it, up twice a day, six it, days a week. You know it is, but you kind of just get into it really and it's like a sort of um, a conveyor belt in a way. It just starts, that's it, it's up and running and you know, it's, it's just like a train really and, and uh, you can't miss it, you're, you're always on it and, and it's, it's just fantastic because... I get to do all of my normal stuff that I that I do in my in my show, but I get to put that in sort of crowbar into the into the plot, and I also get to pretend to be an actor for a couple of months at Christmas. Yes. So that's, oh, I love it. And does it pay for the rest of the year? Because I'm told it's quite a good payday. Um, it doesn't pay for the rest of the year. It helps pay my tax bill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Panto is definitely a good earner, and um, I've done it for a long time. So I think this year I'll, I'll be in um, I'm in Wolverhampton at the Grand, mm. and it'll be my sixteenth. Uh, year in Panto, so it's uh, it's something that I love doing. Who and, are you doing it with? Uh, I'm with Pantomime himself, Biggins. <laughs> it doesn't get any bigger than that. We had Biggins on the programme recently. I think he's in the same category you are. You're never flawed, are you? You've both always got something to say. You're never going to lose at Panto. Well, I hope so, yeah. I mean, he's an old mate anyway, and, uh, you know, he is the personification of Pantomime, really, isn't he? Yes, and looks fabulous in a frock as well. Let's not forget that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know where I think you ought to go? And I mean this, uh, it's not that we want to get rid where of you. Where have I got to go now? I think you were born to do Vegas. And I'll tell you why. I, I've got to know a guy called Terry Fater very recently. Oh, yeah. Who is probably uh, America's greatest ventriloquist, up there with the best, as you are. And he's selling out every single night. And I'll tell you why. It's because they love an act over there and they love a turn. And he's on 100 million over 10 years to do it. Not bad, is it? Uh, no, it's quite good. I saw Terry's show actually last year. I, I have actually done Vegas a few times. And um, I've, I've guested on some different variety shows and that's I love Vegas but it's so, not somewhere I could be for a long time no I think that was semi nuts it, it's um don't you like it, a buffet it's, it's good for yes once <laughs> it's good Vegas is good for a week and it's and I I absolutely love all those Cirque du Soleil shows and all the you know they, they are the biggest the best shows in the world right so it's definitely worth worth going but it's nice to you know leave and come home hmm. Do you get nervous still doing it? Because there are things that could go wrong because you play with the audience, don't you? Yeah, there's always a chance of uh, of something going wrong. But I think that's what kind of keeps you um, that keeps you gives you that edge really and keeps you kind of um, you know uh, keeps you on your toes. And I think that's a very, that's a good thing. You've got to uh, thank Jonathan Ross for your career in one way in terms of TV. <laughs> I mean, you were working way before him, but he gave you the big break on the big big talent show, didn't he? Yeah, that was in 1996, I think it was, and um, yeah, I won that show, and that was kind of like the first of the uh, of the new new wave um, mm. of of talent TV talent shows, and um, I mean compared to sort of Britain's Got Talent now and X Factor, I mean the votes were were sort of nothing compared to the millions that the people of you know that phone in now. But um, yeah, that was very helpful. And the control of entertainment at ITV at the time was uh, a man called Nigel Lithgow, uh, nasty Nigel from Pop yes. Stars, and now has gone to America and American Idol and all these shows, and um, he was in charge. So basically, they had a winner and they had to do something with me really so they they put me on all these other sort of shows before variety kind of disappeared really and then reality television came in so i went back out and started working the clubs again and, and the comedy circuit mm. and sort of changing my act and making it more modern really and, um, and now i'm back
Well, I was going to say, and to think that Jonathan Ross ended his career and you've still got yours as an Irish. <laughs> Maybe you should be appearing on your talent show. Well, who knows, one day. <laughs> um, you've done so many amazing things and performed to so many famous people as well. Do you, do you get a kick out of that? Because it's always nice when you can play with a celebrity, if you know what I'm trying to say. Well, you know, I did a, one of those shows I was talking about, actually, for, for, for uh, ITV. I did Shirley Bassey's 60th birthday special. And that was just, that was a few months after I'd won the, uh, the big talent show. And I'd done, you know, I'd been gigging for a long time. But but doing a show like that is what is like one of those audience with you look at the audience and there's literally just sort of famous faces everywhere and then they have the the normal audience behind the famous yes. uh, audience and um, you know you want to get to the audience the proper audience not the famous people because they all sit there you know with all their arms folded kind of like yeah we've seen this yeah come on make us laugh then and um I was doing a song. I had Sam, one of my characters, sing a song, one of Shirley Bassey's songs, to her. And so I rehearsed it all week, and I was absolutely, you know, I, I knew the song inside out, upside down. I could do it in my sleep. And it got to the night, and, J and Jimmy Tarbutt was the uh, was the compere. And I did some jokes, and Nigel said, just do a minute and a half of material and then get into the song. And I'd rehearsed it with the, with the keyboard player, and it was all fantastic. I did some jokes, and the jokes really died. <laughs> I did some jokes about about Tarby and Sam Sam was having a go at Tarby and just sort of calling him ugly which was a bit of a catchphrase anyway uh, it didn't work at all and I was thinking oh god right get into the song anyway I started the first two lines of the song and it went something like um I will love you as I love you all my life and then my brain just went blank and that's the first and only time I've ever just completely and utterly dried. Oh. And, uh, and luckily it wasn't a live show, so we did it again, and it was all fine on the night. But it was just one, it was just really off-putting looking around. It was like Jeffrey Archer looking at me from the one, one place, Gloria Hunniford, you know, on my left, and there's just all these faces. And I knew some of these people, but it was it was very daunting. But I think I've kind of I hopefully I've I've got over that now. Is it nice to be admired and respected by showbiz people? I know the uh, Des O'Connors and people like that have banged your drum big time because there aren't many of you left aren't there there aren't that many people who can stand in front of an audience and just entertain no i think it's yes it's great i mean des des was um, brilliant with des and mel i did that quite a few times and it was a great platform for you know up and coming comedians really and also you know um, people that we we still know and love so it, there, there aren't the shows now and so when you've got someone like des who's very passionate about comedy and and new acts and is very supportive that's that's a really big help and so uh, you kind of need more of that, really. Although I think things are changing. I've I've just uh, did a show called Comedy Rocks, which was like mm. a modern day variety show earlier this year, which Jason Manford hosted, and I think that's going to be a series next year uh, for ITV. So that I think things are changing now, and there will be more opportunities for. You know. Is there any programme right now that Jason Manford isn't presenting? No, I don't Is think there... so, no. <laughs> I think he might be Flavour of the Month. What do you think? I, I've got to say, I think he's brilliant. He's just, I mean, I've worked with him on the circuit for years, and, uh, you know, he's just very... He, he sort of appeals to everybody, really. Hmm. You can't... I don't know anyone that doesn't like him. No, no, absolutely. Uh, I want to talk to you about life on the road, because it makes me a bit sad thinking about you. Are you following Lenny or Henry around all these premier lodges, staying them night after <laughs> night after night? Well, do you know what? This sounds really kind of boring now, but I actually... at the moment i've just started the first week of the tour and i've been able to get home every night i mean i get home late but i get home and then i can go to the gym in the morning and then i get in the car at lunchtime and then i go off to the next gig it's only when i'm doing this week i think i'm in bath and then i go to wales and places like that i'll stay over but most of the time i try and get back mm. and do you find yourself talking to yourself quite a lot now let's just put this um put this to rest immediately uh, when i finish the show i do not talk to the puppets all right i know there's other people out there that do talk to their uh, chickens or ducks or whatever it is they are. Right? Emus. But, yeah. yes. but none of that goes on with me. And I've just got to tell you, I was doing a gig a while back at Jonglers, the comedy mm. club, and and I was doing the show, and Sam, my, my um, cheeky kid character, uh, was having a go at someone calling him ugly and I could see the guy's body language all changing in the front row and I was thinking yeah. right leave this guy alone now it looks like he's going to get cross so anyway I, I went on and did some different material as I was leaving the show I was walking out with a, another comedian friend of mine and he walked ahead and I, I just had this feeling this guy was going to be waiting for me and he was waiting for me by the door and he stopped me going through mm -hmm. and as I walked through the doorway he sort of got in the way and he went oi and I went yeah and he went you better tell your little mate to watch his mouth <laughs> and, and I went yeah yeah right okay and he went no seriously that's not a true story, is that it, is Paul? You've made that. That is a true story, <laughs> I promise you. Can I ask you a very personal question to end with? Well, you can I don't, try. Well, I don't really know how to. Fr can you, um, can you get ladies being Paul Zerden with a puppet? 
Well, do you know you can? <laughs> in, in <laughs> Why are you my laughing? Sh- in my well, in my show, <laughs> I have three characters. I've got Sam, Albert, and the baby, and there's all a lot of interaction with the audience with all the characters. Sam's always finds someone in the front row he doesn't like, and a woman that he fancies. The old man still chases women, but can't remember what to do <laughs> when he catches them, and uh, and is eyeing up a woman in the front row. And the baby wants to be breastfed by a woman in the front row. So <laughs> there's a lot of women involved in the show, and um, quite often. You know, well, occasionally, now and again, yeah. you know, sometimes they might be waiting backstage, uh, you know, the stage door for a little To get autograph. an autograph, yeah. yeah. Well, so let, it can work you, in your favour. Let me give you a round of applause. I'll tell you what <laughs> I'm going to do. I'm gonna, if you could swap seats, because I want to talk to Sam in our final remaining moment. Oh, Alex, I've got a terrible hangover. I can't really speak for long. I went to a big puppet party last night. Oh, well, you um, should have seen him. All these puppets were all over the place. Sooty and sweet were there. Legless. <laughs> Telly tubbies all over the place. Lala was Gaga, Dipsy was Tipsy, Poet de Fleur and Tinky Winky was absolutely faced. <laughs> I'm in a terrible state. What would you like to know? Sam, I understand you were on tour with Joe Pasquale recently. How was that? Well, it was very confusing because we both sound the same. <laughs> I was just wondering. <laughs> and he's a good boy, Joe. He's a nice man, isn't he? He's, he's, he's not really a man. He's a kid. He's not grown up yet. Bless him. He's, he's, he's doing all kinds of things like flying planes and getting fit doing boxing now. I think he is trying to grow up. Do you, do you worry that you're going to one day go through puberty and, and this voice will be no more? Um, well, you'll have to ask Mr Zerdin about that. But at the moment, I mean, you know, I'm sounding a bit croaky because mm. he was out on the lash last night. Oh, my God. But apart from that, no, it'd be he wasn't right. getting autographs from people who were waiting backstage, was he? Yeah, actually, Albert wants to say a word. Albert, say, Albert, are you here? Yes. Well, speak to Alex. Who? Alex Belfield. We're, we're on Radio Leeds now. Oh, well, hello. 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 How are you? Hello. 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 No, this isn't working. I don't. Sam. What? Hello. Who is this? It's We're something wrong with my hearing aid. I'm hearing voices. Have you got both of them on? You should, you should be in stereo. Albert, it's Alex. <laughs> Alex who? <laughs> Alex Belfield. <laughs> what? Well, I was in the war, you know. Were you? What? Hello? Yes? Yeah. We must dash, because uh, there's things to do. But will you thank Paul for me, Sam? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, sorry, I was gone then, yes. Hello, pay attention. Yes, and, and I'll leave you with some words of you, advice. <laughs> yes, go ahead. With great wisdom yes. comes the strong smell of urine. <laughs>